Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, this is Sherry Vernelson. Thank you to those of you who are already on our call today. Um, we're gonna get started right at four and I'll be coming on periodically just to welcome uh, the new people who've, who've joined us. And um, so I'm gonna mute again, but just know that we're here, um, ready to go.
Good afternoon again. Welcome. We're going to get started in another five minutes. Um, but if those of you who are already on the call, if you don't mind using the little hand feature and raising your hand, if you can hear me all right, that would be wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Great. All right. We'll be back with you again in just a few minutes.
Good afternoon. It is four o'clock, and we'd like to welcome you to our um, quarterly update for dual language immersion um, in this webinar today. Thank you for being here at this late hour during the day. And in order to be respectful of your time, we're just going to go ahead and get going, even though we have just a few on right now, but we hope others will um, be joining us. If you don't mind, if you can once again um, use the little hand icon to raise your hand if you can hear me okay. That would be great. I see several hands uh, going up. So thank you so much for that. Um, if you have any technical questions, if you're having a problem with something, if you don't mind putting those in the questions box, we have people monitoring that box and uh, they can um, help you um, with any technical difficulties that you may be having. Just a few housekeeping things as we um, get into the webinar today. Um, just remember your um, default audio is mic and speakers. If you need to join over um, uh, the phone line, you can click phone call and that's showing up in the green box right there. Um, you've already used your hand icon today and so we've uh, done that to indicate you have audio, so thank you. Again, you can use the questions box at any time to indicate if you have a question or you would like to make a comment. Oops. And just know that this view may not look exactly like your view on your uh, computer, but you should have all of these things available to you. It kind of depends on the browser um, that you are using. So we're going to start off with a uh, question today, a poll question, and I am going to put up that poll. So what are your goals for today's webinar? And you can check all that apply. So if you don't mind right now, just selecting one or more of the following answers, we'll give you about, oh, 20 to 30 seconds to respond, and then we'll check that poll so we can make sure that we, we want to meet your goals today. All right, I'll just give you another few seconds to answer that poll. All right. So now let me share those results of that poll. So we have about 25% of you who are um, looking for leader sharing information with colleagues. About 13% are administrators gathering materials for local presentations. And about 50% of you are looking for that um, information about um, earning the educator um, contact hours for the licensure renewal. Um, and just a couple of you just want to be anonymous here on a Tuesday afternoon, and that's perfectly fine. All right. So at this time, I am going to start recording this broadcast, and it will be available for you in, later in about a week um, or so. We'll get this up on the um, the new website. So let me hit. I did. Hmm. Let me go back. I guess you guys are still seeing the poll. So I closed it, but let's. Sorry about that. You'll have to forgive me. I am um, not the master at. Um, this like um, Anne Marie and um, Ivana R. There we go. We got that back for you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start recording this um, webinar. Give me one second. All right. Looks, mm -hmm. yes, it is being recorded. So thank you so much again for joining us on the Dual Language Immersion Quarterly Webinar today. 
We appreciate your time this afternoon. So today's agenda, we're going to start with some welcomes and introductions, look at some conference updates from the ESEA and the NCDLI 2019 conferences. We're going to share um, a spotlight topic today on the ECU DLI Administrator Certificate. There will also be some updates for you, um, just some reminders and resources, and at the end, we'll um, give you, uh, answer questions that you may have um, from throughout the webinar. So this is our North Carolina dual language immersion team here from DPI. I'm on the call today that I've seen so far, and if I miss one of our team members, I apologize. But we have Ivana Manthrower Anderson. She's here in the room with me, helping me run the webinar. We have Anne Marie Gunter. Um, Anne Marie is also in the building today. She's in her cube, and she's helping to monitor the questions. We also have Ellen Hart joining us today from North Carolina Virtual Public Schools. Mia Johnson through with the K3 Literacy Group here at DPI, and myself. I'm Sherry Vernelson, and I am the representative from the Exceptional Children Division here at DPI. But we also have um, a great team with from other areas here in DPI, such as um, AIG and Advanced Programs, K12 STEM, Social Studies, Healthy Schools, and English Language Arts, and um, our MTSS support. So a little bit later in the presentation, you're going to see our hear from our spotlight speakers today. And those presenters will be Dr. Emily Bivens from Frank Porter Graham Elementary School and Chapel Hill Carborough City Schools, as well as Dr. Marjorie Ringler, who's the department chair and professor of, professor of educational leadership at East Carolina University. And additional guests that they um, have with them today. I know Donna Pogordney is on. She's a DLI administrator in Union County Schools. And I'm not sure if Suzanne Mitchell has been able to join us yet, but she's also a DLI administrator with Johnston County Schools. So we hope she's able to join us as well today. So I have another poll for you. Let's see if I can pull that one up. We want to know what you're hoping to learn from today's session. I don't know why it keeps switching screens on me here. I don't know why that's going like that. Um, well, at least you can't see what's on my screen. Here we go. What are you hoping to learn from today's session? You can select one or more of the following items. And I'll give you just a few minutes to select your answers. So I'll give you just a few more seconds to answer. We have about 60% who have voted. All right, I'm going to close out the poll. I'm going to share those results with you. All right, so we have about 60%, 67% of you are looking for information and hope to learn more about the conferences that were just attended. We've got about 17% who are looking for um, information on the DLI ECU Administrator Certificate. And a large percentage of you want also to know um, about the new DLI website as well as updates from across North Carolina and around the U.S. for um, DLI. So thank you for participating in that. We really um, hope that we're going to meet your learning needs today. Okay. I don't know why it's not switching to the next screen, but we're working on that. I don't know what you did last time, Ivana, to get that poll closed out. But 
We're trying to get it to switch to the next screen. Thanks for your patience as we do that. Let me go back over here. My poll is gone. Sorry for this little delay here. I'm not sure why it's not switching out to the back end. Hmm. I'm going to mute myself just for a second so that um, we can work on this technical difficulty. Hold on one second. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about is the highlights from the 7th International Conference on Immersion and Dual Language Education, which is also known as NCDLI 2019. This was an incredible professional development opportunity for us to host here in North Carolina. We were in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, of course, for this just last week. We had over 900 attendees from around the world. We had representatives from Argentina, Bahrain, Brazil, Canada, France, Germany, Ireland, Israel, South Korea, and of course the United States, many, many states across the United States, including colleagues from as far away as Alaska and Hawaii. As we start to click through this slide, you'll see uh, coming up on the right that we had a series of school site visits. This is always an important part of this conference, as well as the DLI seminar we do each year in North Carolina that's part of the Flank Spring Conference. This is an opportunity for people to visit some of our dual language immersion or DLI schools that um, are well established and that others can learn from as they implement their own programs. On Thursday, the conference continued with pre-conference workshops, um, both in the morning and the afternoon, as well as a keynote address in the evening to get uh, the, the conference officially started. On Friday and Saturday, we had a series of plenaries and symposia featuring researchers and advocates for dual language immersion education from across the world. And then we had over 100 concurrent sessions where um, folks had turned in proposals and gotten approved to present and share what they do in their DLI programs and with implementing DLI programs in general. All the materials from those sessions will be posted on the conference website at the link you see there. That is the regular conference website, ncdli2019.com. So everyone can benefit from that. In addition, here in North Carolina, we had a very unique opportunity, which many of you know about, at least 24 of you know about. Um, we had an opportunity through our ESL and Title III funding to have 24 educators attend this conference on a sponsorship, or kind of like a scholarship, if you will. It covered um, things like a school site visit, a workshop that they wanted to go to, and then conference registration for the two days. You see the districts uh, listed there who had educators who went to the conference, and you see coming up on the screen some tweets shared by our, our um, sponsor attendees um, and what they were experiencing as they went on school site visits like Carlos Valencia at um, Oakland Elementary or Oakland Language Academy in Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. You also had um, Solete Reina, uh, who was just talking about the conference in general. Uh, Kelly Schultz, who talked about some quotes from some of the workshops. And then um, Jennifer Clay, uh, who you can see, shared something from a session she was attending during the conference. Uh, there were many more things happening on Twitter. And of course, um, the folks who went on the sponsorship also took collaborative notes throughout the conference. And so um, that information, where they've added the notes that they um, were taking, are available to all of us. We're going to make that available on the uh, NCDLI website. And they are accessible through this slide as well. So as Anne Marie mentioned, we had eight school visits uh, from Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, Union County Schools. We also had Cabarrus County and um, Rock Hill in South Carolina with South Mecklenburg, Carl A. Fur, Cherry Park, Shiloh Elementary and Sun Valley, Unionville Elementary, E.E. E. Waddell Language Academy, Collinswood Elementary and Oaklawn Academy. I had the privilege of going to Carl A. Fur, where the principal, Darren Roberts, stayed with us for the entire visit. The most exciting part for me is what you see on the screen there with that graph. If you look at the green line, 
Those are the scores for the third grade reading EOGs for the dual language immersion students. The red line is the non dual language immersion students. And so his comment was, what achievement gap? The other picture shows the participants that we had from over six different states around the country. So this slide's a little jam-packed, but so was the conference. If you look at the upper left-hand corner, you see our state superintendent, Mark Johnson, along with conference chairs, Helga Fasciano and Joan Lachance, and Marjorie, I'm sorry, we only got your arm in that particular picture. To the right, you have one of our keynote speakers, Dr. Jeff Swears from Stanford. His topic was the urgent need for authentic communication in every lesson. He has a lot of fans, and if you were able to attend and hear how he helped us build the bricks to help our students have authentic conversations, you would understand why. In the middle, you have our very own Tom Doherty, Kelly Schultz, and Anne-Marie Gunter, who presented on supporting K-12 DLI programs with the team approach. And as you know, they're all part of the team here at DPI. On the bottom left, you have Lynn Fulton Archer from the Virginia Department of Public Instruction. She presented on implementation science, um, applying the stages of implementation to immersion program development. So for me, that was also very interesting with North Carolina being so involved with implementation science and hearing how it can be applied directly to our dual language immersion programs. On the right, you have the entire group that was in the pre-conference session with Monica Lara. One of the things that made her session unique is that her materials, uh, her book is all written in Spanish and the presentation was all done in Spanish as well. And then sort of the cherry on top to top off the entire conference, we wrapped up with Dr. Bill Rivers and Dr. Christina Banfi on education policy, international, national, state, local, and district. So we had quite the international conference, but it doesn't stop there. It just keeps going. So although Drs. Wayne Thomas and Virginia Collier were unable to attend, both they and their work were well represented via the panel of experts that you see over on the left, speaking on the 21st century school, how and why dual language works for everyone, PK through 12. Wilma Valero, the former director of English Learner Programs for U46 Community School District in Illinois, Dr. Jennifer Steele, American University, Dr. Joan Lachance, University of North Carolina, Charlotte, and Michael Rodriguez, Director of Operations for Dual Language Education of New Mexico, provided insights into research and classroom practice following a video introduction by Drs. Thomas and Collier. In the picture in the top right, you see David Rogers of Dual Language Education of New Mexico. He's one of the co-authors of the Dual Language Guiding Principles, and he shared with us different ways that those materials can be used with the programs. He also shared the different books that Fuentes Press offers, including the five books that Drs. Wayne and Virginia Collar have written. The newest release, the purple one over on the right, Transforming Secondary Education, Middle and High School Dual Language Programs, includes a chapter by our very own Dr. Joan Lachance of UNC Charlotte. Chapter 15, Transforming Secondary Dual Language Teacher Preparation. Another innovative panel entitled Teacher Preparation, Partnerships and Practices is pictured on the bottom below. Not in the order they appear in the chairs, but in the order they appear alphabetically. Michael Bacon from Portland Public Schools, Nicolette Grant, formerly of Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, but now with Guilford County, Dr. Joan Lachance of the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, and our dear friend from Ireland, whose last name I will not pronounce correctly, TJ O'Clay, maybe? Uh, from the Mary Immaculate College at the University of Limerick, Ireland, and Diane Tedic of Corin Mathai University of Minnesota. One of the topics discussed by this panel was the National Dual Language Education Teacher Preparation Standards, which were released in November. The collaborative project, co-authored by Drs. Michael Guerrero of the University of Texas at Rio Grande Valley and Joan Arla Schatz, University of North Carolina at Charlotte, seeks to establish national standards for DLI teacher preparation at the university level with the hopes of establishing national DLI certification. Wow, again, it was a jam-packed conference with amazing information and amazing people. So some of the presentations um, I had the privilege of being involved in. 
So the very first bullet, the supporting a variety of dual language immersion programs. Talking about how North Carolina is very unique in the way that we support numerous programs being a local autonomy state. The second one took the same idea but compared it with Texas. Texas is quite different from North Carolina with a lot of um, legislation connected to their dual language immersion programs. And so we had the opportunity with Dr. Barbara Kennedy to talk about North Carolina and Texas similarities and differences, but more importantly, to talk with those in the audience from New York, from Hawaii, uh, from South Carolina, and to be able to talk about our programs and leave the presentation with things that we can do to support each other and new ideas for our programs. Amory? And um, as you also see on this slide, um, we featured some other things that we were involved with, such as the supporting K-12 DLI programs with the Team Approach Workshop, which was three of our DLI team members that we talked about before, and a target language assessment of student outcomes in K-12 programs, where we shared data from three of our DLI uh, districts, Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, Chatham County Schools, and Winston-Salem Forsyth County Schools. Um, that information uh, that you see here posted um, in addition to being on the conference website, we'll also be on the professional development or PD presentations page of our new NCDLI site. That site is linked where you see here on the screen and also in the notes. And we make these uh, materials available specifically for us here in North Carolina because they are done by our NCDLI team members, uh, as well as having data and things very relevant to our programs across the state. Lynn Archer Fulton is from Delaware, not Virginia. Not sure where I got that from. <laughs> so networking is a very exciting part of being at any conference. So you have a beautiful picture of the skyline of Charlotte from the hotel. So when you look at the networking pictures over on the left side, you have Kelly Schultz and Tom Doherty, both members of the DPI DLI team representing at the conference. In the bottom right hand, you have Carla Flores Ballestero, who is the principal of Allen J Elementary, and the Urdu teacher, whose name is also is Nam Namra, let's see if I say it right, Namra Ahmed, and a shout out to Namra, who I see is online with us today. Uh, this Urdu program is the only Urdu program in the United States, so we're very excited about that. And then in the upper right hand corner, um, I had to slip myself in there with, on the left, Dr. Barbara Kennedy from Texas, whom I mentioned earlier. She's formerly of the Center for Applied Linguistics and another one of the authors of the Dual Language Guiding Principles. And on the right, you have Dr. Bill Rivers, who calls himself America's Lobbyist for Languages. And uh, he was also that cherry on top at the one of our closing sessions. So an opportunity for all sorts of networking, both in North Carolina, across the country, and internationally at the DLI, NCDLI 2019. All right, thank you Anne-Marie and Ivana for those updates on those conferences. Now we're gonna get into our spotlight um, topic for the day, which is the ECU DLI Administrator Certificate. And we have Dr. Emily Bivens and um, Dr. Ringler um, from ECU with us today to talk about that. Um, and I'm going to let them unmute their microphones and begin their part of the presentation. All right, so Emily, you look unmuted, but we are not hearing you right this second. How about now? Yes, there we go. Okay. All right, so um, hello. We just want to say welcome, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Administrator Certification Program from East Carolina. Um, Marjorie, is there anything you want to say for introductions? Yeah, I just want to say hello. I am um, proud to be working with Emily on this project, um, collaborating with her, an uh, excellent practitioner. And, um, and so we're excited to tell you about our program. 
So we also invited um, Donna and Suzanne, who were part of the first cohort, to add anything along the way. Um, so that they might jump in there and um, and shout out during our session today um, about their experiences as members of the first cohort um, from last school year. So Donna and Suzanne, if you guys want to shout out and say hi. Hello from Donna. This is Sherry. I don't see Suzanne on the line yet, but we're um, looking to see if she is there and we'll get her um, mic turned on. I'm not seeing her yet, um, okay. but just let me know when you guys are ready to move to the next slide and I'll be happy to do that for you. All right. I think we're ready to go. So I guess as we uh, advance to the next slide, I just wanted to give a little bit of context. I've been a dual language principal for 15 years now, and I've made about eight gazillion mistakes along the way. And um, during that process, one of the things that I learned as a leader was that there's just not a lot of professional development and support if you're new to dual language. And in our connections and networking across our state and across the nation, one of the things that we began talking about was how do we provide support as dual language programs and quality dual language programs come online? How do we support leaders in leadership development? What are the critical things that you just have to know as a dual language leader in order to ensure success of the program different than being just a, a principal at a, at a general English only school? So Marjorie, and and a team of people crafted um, the series of four courses that I'm going to talk more about in just a second that you see displayed on your screen now. And we feel like these are the most critical components of being a dual language leader. Uh, Marjorie, anything you want to add? Yeah. And so um, the, the team of people that got together, um, and I think this is an important piece to this program. So we got together uh, principals, district level leaders, DPI leaders, and um, some experts in the field of dual language. And we, you know, we said exactly what Emily said. You know, what did you have to face when you started to open these programs without any support uh, or without really any formal training? And so, um, and so we did. We basically did a series of activities um, to get to these four courses. So the key point is that it, it was developed by practitioners for practitioners. So the series of four courses that you see displayed on your screen now are, um, I'll just sort of give a, a, a capstone and then we'll talk a little bit more about each of the courses. The first one is just the introduction to dual language and we'll call that dual language 101. What does the research say? What's it all about? And that, that course is scheduled to be taught in the second session um, of the summer, is when you begin the cohort. In the fall, uh, students take what we'll just call the, the really the curriculum class. Um, you dive in deeper to what does curriculum in a dual language program look like. And then the spring course is really looking at culture and cultural competency in a dual language program. And then the, the program of study ends in the first session of summer, um, really looking at supervision and program evaluation and how to create an action plan for your own dual language program. Mm -hmm. So if we could advance to the next slide. All right, so the first course um, does go over the what is dual language, what is it not, the basic research, the program models, and the introduction to curriculum. The textbook that we use for that is the dual language A to Z, and then we also encourage participants to go ahead and download those guiding principles of dual language. Um, some of the um, in products of this first course are um, a site visit to a dual language school because some people who um, have taken these courses only know their own dual language school and never had an opportunity to visit another dual language school and also an, admin a, an administrative interview with um, a dual language administrator. Then we ask um, folks to review websites of dual language programs and the culminating task is a video about your school and your DLI program and Suzanne has an amazing video from her school, Selma Elementary, that is linked into the slide presentation. And another output of, of this first course um, that Donna created was the dual language Q&A page um, for Union County, which was uh, uh, just amazing. I, I commonly refer people to that all the time. And then people have the option to come and, and do a learning walk um, at my elementary school in Chapel Hill. So I'll pause for a second and see if there's anything that Donna wants to add as a participant in that first course. Hi. 
Um, I think what I would like to add is that, oh, there's some feedback. This course is extremely practical, and I would encourage anybody who wants to get into the nuts and bolts of immersion and potentially thinking about administration to take this course. Um, the colleagues that are in the class are very valuable for uh, networking and sharing ideas and things that you can put into place right away. The instructors are extremely well informed and can give you advice on numerous subjects. Um, and um, uh, just being involved in the course for me helped me hit the ground running with the district level responsibilities I had with our dual language immersion program. And it's a great body of people to stay connected with after your time in the course ends. And so I would encourage anybody to uh, take the course. And I would also thank ECU for, for providing this course. There are very few courses of this type across the United States. So I think it'll help all of us get better in improving our dual language immersion programs in North Carolina and elsewhere. Thanks. Okay, so if we can advance to the next slide, we'll take a look at the second course. Um, the title of this course is called Leading Content and Instruction. And in this course, we really dive deeper into curriculum development and instructional monitoring. So um, we don't require students to have the teaching for biliteracy text, but certainly we use several chapters from that text and also the guiding principles. And so some of the products from this particular course are really looking at standards-based instruction in a dual language program, really ensuring that everything that you're doing are aligning to our state and national standards. Uh, it also asks um, participants to look at a unit review, look at a unit of study that's currently being taught in your school and evaluate how well is it going related to various aspects um, in a rubric. We also ask participants to set up an account with the Center for Teaching by Literacy. It's a free account and um, members can then log on, look at sample videos, look at sample units of study and engage in resources and other practitioners across the United States. We also ask participants to do classroom observations and analysis of criteria of those classroom observations, as well as look at a variety of schedules that, um, that can work in a dual language program. And then to begin thinking about assessment related to the curriculum instruction assessment cycle, um, using the guiding principles and standards from the guiding principles to really think about assessment across the two languages in a dual language program. So I'll, I'll pause after the nuts and bolts and see if Donna wants to add anything from her experience as a student. Um, I would share that the Teaching for Biliteracy book was extremely relevant. And I know that there are practitioners in North Carolina that are using this book and the layout of it within their programs. I think Dr. Bivens can talk about that. Um, hearing, being able to visit um, Dr. Vivin's school and see it in, in play was very valuable. We here in Union County actually did a book study last fall with the same book, and it was a very valuable foundation for us to um, share our ideas. And then also we've implemented the guiding principles for principles, leadership in the buildings um, among principles, and also we've suggested it for K-5 DLI alignment um, studies and within schools. Awesome. All right, if we can flip to the next slide, we'll go over the third course. This one's entitled Leading Cross-Cultural Competence. And the nuts and bolts of this course are really looking at the integration of culture into the school community and the curriculum. So there's a, a lot of work around culturally proficient instructional practices and then family engagement and empowerment. And again, we're resting on the guiding principles in, um, in the strand about family and community engagement. We don't use a specific text for the other um, resources for this particular course. We use a variety of articles and online resources that are embedded in the course. Some of the products from this course are um, tools and the use of tools for assessing culture in the school community and the curriculum, and some tools for measuring cultural competence of staff, um, of students, and of the curriculum itself. And um, the uh, members of the class also uh, create a plan for family engagement and advocacy because every dual language program needs some sort of advocacy group. We also uh, begin to look at professional development for teachers related to cross-cultural competence because culture is a huge piece that sometimes um, is not quite as much at the forefront as uh, reading, writing, math, um, other subjects in the, in the curriculum. So I'll pause there and see if Donna wants to add anything. 
No, just to say that, as Dr. Bivens said, this is so often overlooked. Um, and to really have a well, well established program and to uh, reach the three pillars of um, a dual language immersion program, as suggested by the Center for Applied Linguistics, the cultural piece can't be overlooked. And it's probably the most nebulous and most overlooked. So it was a good reminder and a good study for us. OK, we'll flip to the next slide. Um, the last course in the series is called Educational Supervision of DLI Programs. And in this course, uh, we really talk about staff recruitment and retention because that seems to be an ongoing huge challenge in all dual language programs because without quality staff, you're not going to be able to go too far. We also take a look at budget and how to finance different aspects of the dual language program, as well as advocacy at the school and the policy level. We look at dual language policies that might need to be in place in a school district and how a dual language administrator either at the school or the central office level can advocate to boards of education about policy. We also begin to look at program review and self-assessment and then action planning. And again, we use those guiding principles as a tool for self-assessing the programs um, and a variety of other resources. So there's not a specific text for this course except for the guiding principles. Um, some of the products of this course are a recruitment plan for your individual school or your school district, a professional professional development plan that looks at all aspects of dual language, again, building on the three previous courses, an advocacy presentation that you might do for new families or for your board of education or central office staff or a community agency. And then the, the culminating task is the, the self-assessment um, of your program with the guiding principles and then a draft action plan of where you might want to go next with your dual language program based on that self-assessment in the next year, three years, five years. Um, so I'll pause there and see if Donna wants to add anything. I'll just it, uh, reiterate the fact that it, the, the course is very practical. Um, I created some action plans specifically on what assessment we needed in our district where we had gaps and then professional development. We've expanded um, our assessment this year and um, made it more well balanced and we've expanded our professional development and um, it's been very important for the teachers and they've been very happy to have more professional development throughout this year um, just because we identified gaps and needs and uh, it was just a very um, proactive uh, class and that you could use what we uh, learned in practice. Okay, great. If we could advance to the next slide. Marjorie, you want to talk about nuts and bolts? Yes, I'll be glad to. So so the, the program is a completely online program. Uh, when we discuss this as a group, we know that all administrators are so busy and we really want it to reach areas where um, they don't have dual language programs and an ECU may not be close to them. So our faculty teach online and um, they do at least one virtual or face-to-face -face meeting, um, maybe at a conference, a dual language conference, um, or online. Um, but it's not required. It's 100% online. You get a certificate at the end of the four courses. So it, it official from ECU. The courses are... Um, post masters so you're looking at courses that could apply potentially to a doctorate program but in our pro in our case we have a specialist degree and so if by any chance students do the four courses and decide that they want to continue and get a degree they can um, go on into the educational specialist degree and and get that uh, we are looking for candidates that um, have their masters and they have experience in administration um, the courses are for administrators to lead these programs, so we, we do capitalize on previous experience as leaders. Um, so, um, let's see, the, the cost. I think the cost is something that I, I think we need to really highlight. Um, each course, because it is distance ed, each course is uh, right around $750 per semester. So altogether, the program is $3,000 uh, for four courses. You know, it may vary just by a few when tuition increases, but it hasn't increased um, a lot. So I think that said, you want to add anything else, Emily? Um, I'll just say that as a leader, some of the um, things that are required um, components and outputs of each of the courses 
I never had opportunity to develop. And so like, for example, when I look at Suzanne's video that welcomes families to her dual language program, I've been a dual language principal for 15 years and I don't have time like many busy administrators do unless someone made me sit down and create that. So even 15 years later, I still don't have one, nor do I have a beautiful Q&A like Donna does. And so I think that providing really a tool and time allocated and support and networking to create practical products that you need as a dual language leader is really essential. And I have created friends and networks that um, have taught me a lot, uh, even though I teach some of the courses in the program. And I know Charles would echo that um, in his experiences as an, as an instructor in, in the courses too. The way that um, we tend to post classes is allowing people um, really kind of a two week window in which to complete courses so it, it doesn't feel like, oh my gosh, I have to get everything done right now and I'm super busy with evaluations or I'm really busy with my budget or my school improvement plan or things of that nature. There's a lot of flexibility within the scope of the semester um, or the, the summer course offering. Um, and so I guess that's kind of all I have to say about the nuts and bolts. Could we, um, John, is there anything you want to add about just practicality? No, I think we've said it all. I think the, that's the value of it. Networking and the immediate application that you can do within, you know, deep um, research based and um, good readings um, that support what you're trying to create. Uh -huh. All right, could we advance to the next slide? Okay, so we're, they're going to launch a poll question, and I have never done a poll question, but I think everybody's experienced that a couple of times in today's webinar. Um, but you can see the questions in front of you if we wanna go ahead and launch that poll. We'll give everybody a few minutes to, um, to respond to the poll about where you are with the, a, a certificate program. This is also a good time for people to ask any questions they want by putting them in the question box. We're watching for those. This is Sherry. We have about 35% who have voted. Um, so we'll just give maybe another five seconds and then we'll go ahead and close that poll. Okay, so it looks like people uh, would like more information. Um, on the very first slide of the spotlight, um, you saw the link to the ECU website. Um, there's a wonderful um, video about the dual language um, certificate program that I would encourage participants to watch. And I think there's a link in the presentation to that video as well, as well as information about the program. I'm sure that um, Donna or other um, participants in, in the two cohorts that we've had thus far would be happy to talk to people if they need more information um, I'd be happy to provide it I know Marjorie would so if um, if folks would like to reach out and get that additional information or check out that website that would be wonderful and we do have a couple of questions now that I think you can respond to pretty easily um, we have people asking about who's eligible for the certificate so one person says I'm not an administrator can I apply for the program so you can apply for the program, but it is designed for a leader. So we have had a few students who were teachers who had a leadership role for dual language in, the, in their school. And those participants, um, were able to work with an administrator in their school about aspects of the schedule or the budget or things that would not normally be under the purview of a teacher. Um, so I would say if you were a teacher leader or were um, being groomed in your district or had desires to be a dual language leader, then this um, might be the right program for you. We have had a few just teachers though who did not have additional leadership responsibilities and they were challenged in some aspects to um, to complete some of the assignments in the program just because they didn't have access and um, the tasks that were involved were not part of their ongoing responsibility but the certificate program I've heard a number of participants say you know um, I was able to obviously add it to my continuing education units I as part of their leadership development others have said you know the job that I have right now I got because I had the certificate from East Carolina. Other folks um, used it as 
as, um, as evidence in annual evaluations. And so I think their certificate itself can be used in a variety of ways. It is not a certification with the state of North Carolina for school administration. It is just a certificate endorsing the, um, the person who completes the series of four courses that they now have of expertise in DLI that they didn't have before. And I, I don't, Marjorie, if you want to add anything to that about the question. No, I think I think that's that's a really good answer. So if you're looking to lead or if you're leading, but you do need to have access to some an administrator if you're not actually in a leadership position. Mm -hmm. All right, just a couple clarifications. Um, I think that answers the question about the person who said, is this certificate for principals only? And as you've heard, it's for a variety of leaders, different roles and so forth. Um, we have put the direct link to the ECU DLI Administrator Certificate webpage in the chat box. So you can click over to that and get um, many details about the program. And then we also had someone who asked a clarification question. Um, regarding the time uh, required per module or per course something about um, you said there's two weeks to complete a course or did you mean about two months to complete a course so could you kind of clarify the, the yes. course sequence for the cohort sure. so a, a course is um, the first course is the second semester for the summer program which is around the middle of June to around the middle of July so it's a typical summer school uh, college level course which is about four to five weeks and then the second course is the fall semester the spring course is the spring semester from you know, January to May, and then the first summer course is the middle of May to the middle of June. I, I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. The um, what I meant is that for each assignment or each um, lesson in the arc of lessons, you have about a two week window to complete assignments. So some students would say, "I'm really jammed at work right now. I can't get to um, interviewing an administrator, but in my two week window, I can schedule it on day 12 instead of day two." And so it allowed a lot of flexibility for the completion of an assignment within the sequence of the semester or the summer session. All right, I'm looking, I'm looking for additional questions. The only one I see right now is, will this recording be posted after the webinar? And the answer is yes. Um, once our webinar is through today, we will process this recording. It will be posted on the um, professional development page of our NCDLI website. It will actually be linked up as a YouTube video on the playlist we have through the NCDPI YouTube channel. So look for that um, certainly within a week of our live broadcast, but probably earlier than that. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and mute myself, but if anybody has additional questions, feel free to reach out. Excellent. So, um, Dr. Bivens and Dr. Ringler and Donna, thank you so much for all of that information, and um, we hope that you found it valuable um, and really look into this program a little bit more because it, it, it's very valuable um, for your professional growth and development. So thank you. Appreciate your time today. We have another, it's not a poll, this time it's just a question box check. And so we'd like to know what ideas you have about other opportunities for leadership development. So if you'll take the opportunity um, to in the questions box, um, type in those ideas. Um, it would be much appreciated. And we'll give you just um, a minute or so to do that. So it doesn't look like we have anything coming in at this point. 
Um, but throughout the rest of the webinar, if you do have ideas about other opportunities for leadership development and would like to share those in the question box, please do that. And just uh, preface it, uh, you know, with a, the little title, leadership development um, ideas. Um, that way we know um, that it was about this question. All right. So we are going to move on. And right now, um, we're going to be providing you with some updates. All right, the first update we have to share is that NCDLI has a brand new website. You see it pictured there on the right-hand side of the screen. Some of you know, I think, that our Wikispaces, our Wikispaces as a company, went out of business. So that means everybody at NCDPI got new websites. And so this is our new Google site for dual language immersion or DLI programs. I have the direct link on there as well as the bit.ly link. You can use either one to get to it. I also have just sent that out into the um, chat box. You can click on those directly from there. Um, let's just take a quick moment to go out. Um, Sherry, if you click on one of the links on the um, slide, it should take you out there and display the website. All right. So take a close look. One thing to know is that um, you can always find your way around the website in the upper right hand corner. You see all of our main pages. You see the home page. So you can always get back to where you started. Uh, contact us that has information about our DLI team. The standards page about the standards we use um, in uh, language acquisition in DLI programs. The resources page, which as you see there, um, she's mousing over. So there's a direct link under resources to a page also just for the NC DLI program directory for the state as well as the Thomas and Collier research. In addition, on the resources page in general, there's a lot of um, links to information from universities uh, and other research that supports DLI. On the professional development uh, page, there's information about this webinar series, of course, and about our annual DLI seminar, which, of course, this year was the International Immersion Conference. So materials from both of those professional development offerings, as well as other PD offerings for DLI educators, are linked from there. On the policy side, uh, there's a page about policies in general with DLI, and that's being added to quite a bit. On the help page at the end, if you're ever looking for what is where on the website, there's a whole uh, site map there that can help you find your way. Um, on this landing page that you see here, um, you have our list of NC uh, DLI programs towards the bottom. And those have just been updated um, to reflect our new links. And so if you're wanting to share those with parents or other stakeholders, they're right there where you need them and can download them from the Google Drive just like before. All right, that's our new website. I encourage you to take a look at it and find the resources you've, you've come to rely on uh, posted in their new home. Some upcoming... Um events. I don't know why that whole slide's not showing, but we'll start with NABE. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and click it so we can... There we go. We'll start there. So the National Council of State Title III Directors is not just for people in positions at the state. It is for anyone who's an advocate for English learners. And one of the things that we do talk about with our English learners is our dual language immersion programs. On March 6th, the National Council is hosting their annual meeting, and Dr. Joel Gomez from the Center of Applied Linguistics and Dr. Barbara Kennedy will be presenting on the dual language guiding principles, how we can use them. They were mentioned as one of the texts that's used in the administrator courses. Uh, one of the uses they talked about was to do actually a self-evaluation of your program. We also have Carol Salva, who's the author of Boosting Achievement, uh, Dr. Bill Rivers that we saw a little bit earlier from this most recent conference, along with Jose Vienna, who is with the Office of English Language Acquisition, and Carol Salva will be um, offering an advocacy panel. That is in, during the pre-conference day of NABE, the National Association of Bilingual Educators, and that is March 7th through 9th with the title Experience the Magic by Literacy as a Global Imperative, Enriched Education for Empowerment, Equity, and Excellence. Both of these events are taking place at Lake Buena Vista, Florida, thus the experience, the magic in the title. So we hope that if you are available, you can join us. It's coming up quickly, and it's a great opportunity to learn more about dual language immersion and um, have the opportunity to network just as we did most recently at NCDLI 2019. 
A little later in March will be the SCOLT Conference. SCOLT is the Southern Conference on Language Teaching. It's a, the regional conference for uh, the southeastern states, including North Carolina, as well as the U.S. territories that are nearby. This year it'll be uh, March 21st to 23rd in Myrtle Beach, North, South Carolina. And FLANC, the Foreign Language Association in North Carolina, is one of three partners with SCOLT sort of hosting this. So FLANC, as well as the sister organization in South Carolina for uh, language teachers, will be hosting. School registration is open, as it says on the slide. There are pre-conference workshops at over 150 sessions. One thing to note is that there will be an immersion strand this year at the SCOLT conference. Your registration includes a number of things, and you can see there are various registration rates um, that are available until March 1st, so that's coming up a little later. There's also a Saturday-only registration. You can see the SCOLT website at scolt.org for details um, and information about registering. All right, so we have another poll question for you. We're keeping you engaged today. So let me get this poll launched, but we want to know um, which of the updates do you want to get uh, more information about to share with others? So let me launch this poll here. I don't know what, there we go. All right, we'll give you just a few seconds to complete that poll. And you have the ability to check all that apply here. All right, I'll give you just another five seconds to put in your answer and then I'm gonna close the poll. All right, I'm going to close the poll and get back to sharing my screen here. There we go. And share those results with you. All right, so about 73% of you would like to get more information on the website to share with others. And a few of you want uh, more information on the NCSTIID. Sorry, I don't know the full <laughs> name of that on March 6th. Um, and about 18% on SCOLT. And 36% of you are still deciding what you would like to get more information about. So thank you so much for participating in that poll. All right, so we're ready for some reminders and resources. All right. Um, as we always do, we finish up with a reminder about our DLI quarterly update webinars for this year, of course. We have one left to go. That'll be on April 9th. You see at the bottom of the page. And this is also a screenshot um, to remind you of where our materials are located now for our DLI quarterly update webinars. Even though we've just switched over to the new website, we do have all the materials from our previous webinars this year. Remember, those were on Tuesdays um, at 4 to 5 p.m. We try to schedule our webinars later in the day so more people can join us. I'm going to go ahead and send the link to uh, our professional development page on the new NCDLI website. That is the link you see on the screen as well. Uh, that'll take you directly there. And the link to register for the April 9th webinar is already posted, so you can fill that out and submit today if you'd like. So we do have a comment related to the conferences that um, some of our participants would like to see conference information like a year out so that they have time for the planning. It was also a comment um, about how can we determine when and how to best encourage our APs and our principals to get involved with the dual language administrator certificate. So if anyone has ideas about that, please share in the question box. All right, couple things there. Um, with the question about looking at conferences a year out, um, I'm typing up a message about signing up for our DLI educators listserv. Um, we share a number of things on that listserv, including uh, our monthly DLI newsletter, as well as invitations to um, webinars and, and other professional development like this. Um, we also try to share information about upcoming conferences as, as soon as we know about them and try to post them on the website and draw your attention to them. So I'm going to put that link in there. 
um, and send it out. If you go to the um, link I'm sending about signing up for the DLI Educators Listserv, you, it will ask you to put in your email address and then let you choose from a number of listservs here at DPI. Um, do look in the list alphabetically for DLI educators or dual language immersion educators, but there's also other things there that may be of interest to you um, in your work with DLI programs. All right. And on this slide, we just want to remind you about who our NCDPI DLI team contacts are. So, of course, Havana, Manthrower, Anderson, and Anne Marie Gunter are our team co leads for the DLI team here at DPI. And then we have representatives from all areas um, here at DPI to support um, the team. And you can feel free to contact any one of those um, team members at any time should you have any questions. And there are their photos. If there are any final questions that you want to slip into the questions box at this time, feel free. And I'll let Anne Marie and Ivana um, monitor that quickly and they can answer any question, last minute questions that might come in. All right, if there are no other questions coming in, we want to thank you so much for joining um, our webinar today and um, hope that you will join us for the next one in, I can't remember when the next one is, um, but it will be on the, on the website, unless Anne-Marie, you know. Um, our next um, DLI Coral Update webinar is on April 9th. April. Mm -hmm. Great. Go ahead, Anne-Marie. I'm just looking at the question box. Uh, we don't have any more questions right now. We do have a couple of folks thanking us for this broadcast today, as well as our guest speakers um, from the ECU DLI Administrator Certificate Program. Um, in addition, we have one person who said the DLI conference was fantastic. Let's do it again. Uh, indeed, it was wonderful. Um, and know that that uh, International Immersion Conference happens every two years now. If we follow the same pattern as before, the next one will be up in Minnesota, probably in 2020. So look for that. And as I said, always look for our annual NCDLI seminar, which um, is coordinated with the Flank Spring Conference. So typically taking place at one of our UNC campus uh, locations um, in either the east or the west in the spring. So that's something we can all look forward to as well. All right. Got a couple of comments about how ECU rocks. I think we have some pirates in the house um, <laughs> who are enthusiastic, and uh, several folks said they love the guest speakers. Great. Well, again, thank you so much for your time and attention today, and also, again, thank you to our guest speakers uh, for the information that they shared. And um, we hope you have a great rest of your day and evening, and we're going to be signing off. Thanks again.